Chapter 15. What Came Down the Chimney Christmas Eve is real quiet. Like Freak says, you could hear a mouse fart, which even if it is a stupid joke, makes Grimm smile and shake his head. Freak and the Fair Gwen have supper with us, and we're all trying to pretend like everything is normal, and nobody says a word about Killer Kane getting out of prison. The Fair Gwen is wearing this dark red silky blouse and a long black skirt that almost touches the floor, and her waist is so small, she looks like one of those Christmas ornaments, the kind that makes a tingle bell sound when the branches move. Freak is all dressed up, too. He's wearing this tweedy new seat suit jacket that has patches on the elbows, and Grimm says all he needs is a pipe, and he'll look like quite the professor. No tobacco, Freak says. Nicotine is a toxic waste of time. Just the pipe, Grimm insists. You don't have to smoke it. Don't get him started on bad habits, Graham says. Maxwell, pass the mint sauce. Mint sauce is one of Graham's specialties, and you'd be amazed how it improves everything, which is why I've been keeping it close by. Anyhow, the food is the best. You can't beat Graham for, thanks for Christmas or Thanksgiving or birthdays, and we all eat until we're fit to bust, except the Fair Gwen makes sure Freak doesn't eat too fast. You'd think I was starving him, the Fair Gwen says. Please, sir, more gruel, he says, holding up his plate and making a funny face where his tongue sticks out sideways, and Graham laughs so hard she has a coughing fit, which makes us all shut up. After supper, we sit around like you do, admiring the tree and talking about how lucky we are not to be homeless, and Grimm starts telling these old stories about when he was a kid, and they got lumps of coal in their stockings. If we were lucky, we got an apple core, he says, or a few orange rinds. Now, Arthur, Graham says, you never got a lump of coal in your life. You're right. We never even got a lump of coal. Can you imagine? My father couldn't afford coal, so he'd write the word coal on a piece of paper and put it in our stockings, and we'd pretend it was a lump of coal. That's how poor we were. The fair Gwen is laughing to herself and shaking her head. Graham says, how can you tell such lies on Christmas Eve? I'm telling tales, my dear, not lies. Lies are mean things, and tales are meant to entertain. And so we all sit there acting polite and listening to Grimm make up stuff no one would ever in a million years believe. And all of us have a cup of hot chocolate and a piece of Russell Stover candy right out of the box. And then it's time to pass around a few of the presents. Graham has this rule that you can open one on Christmas Eve and you save the rest for morning, which can be tough deciding what to open first. Grimm always starts it off because, like he says, he's really a kid at heart and he can't stand to wait. From Graham, he gets this woolly sweater that buttons up the front, and he acts surprised, even though he's got about a hundred just like it already. Then Graham opens her present from me, which is a bracelet made of shells from beaches around the world, and she right away puts it on and says it's just what she wanted, which is so like Graham. If you give her an, gave her an old beer can, she'd act pleased and say it was just what she wanted. Then Freak opens his present from me, and even before he gets all the paper all the way off, he gives me this thumbs up and says, cool. It's a gizmo that looks like a jackknife, but really, it's a whole bunch of little screwdrivers and wrenches and even a little magnifying glass. I'm pretty sure Freak can invent stuff with it if he feels like it. Graham gives the fair Gwen this scarf that just happens to match her blouse, and everybody goes, ooh and ah, and then I finally decide what present to open. Right away, you'd know it was something Freak did, because the box isn't square. It's pointed at the top like a pyramid, and instead of regular wrapping paper, he's got Sunday comics taped all over it, and it's driving me nuts trying to figure out what would fit inside a pyramid-shaped box. Freak seems like he's just as excited as me, even though he already knows what he put inside. Take off all the paper first, he says. There's a special way to open it. Real careful, I peel off all the paper, and the thing is, it's not a pyramid-shaped box he bought somewhere. He made it. You can see where he cut out the pieces of cardboard and taped them together, and written on the sides of the pyramid are these little signs and arrows. Follow the arrows, he says. The arrows point all over the place, and I have to keep turning the pyramid around until finally I get to this sign that says, Press here and be amazed. Go on, Freak says. It's not an explosive device, silly. It won't blow up in your face. I press the spot on the pyramid, and all of a sudden, all four sides fold down at the same time, and I'm looking inside the pyramid, and just like Freak promised, I am amazed. The young man is a genius, Grimm is saying. 
and I don't use that word lightly. Grimm is right about that because Freak has the whole thing rigged with these elastic bands and paper clips, which is what made the sides unfold all at the same time. And inside is this little platform, and on the platform is a book. Not a normal book like you buy in the store, but a book he made himself. You can tell that right away. It looks so special, I'm afraid to pick it up, or I might ruin it. What I did was take all my favorite words, Freak says, and put them in alphabetical order. Like a dictionary? Exactly, Freak says, but different, because it's my dictionary. Go on and look inside. I open up the book the way he asks, and the pages smell like a ballpoint pen. It starts with A, just like a regular dictionary, but as Freak says, it's different. A, aardvark, a silly looking creature that eats ants. Arg, what the aardvark says when it eats ants. Abacus, a finger powered computer. Abscissa, the horizontal truth. You don't have to read them all tonight, Freak says. Save some for tomorrow. I gotta tell you, though, you're gonna flip when you see what I did with the Zs. This is the best, getting Freak's dictionary. Everything else is extra. I figure it will take forever to fall asleep because my head is full of stuff. Graham and his written down lump of coal, the pyramid with the special book inside, and how fat, wet flakes of snow were falling when the fair Gwen towed Freak home in his American Flyer wagon and the way he was pretending to boss her by saying, on Donner, on Dasher, on Guinevere. And she's telling him to shut up or she'll leave him outside until he turns into a snowman. Which must be why I'm dreaming about a little snowman who looks like Freak. The snowman keeps saying, cool, cool. And when I wake up, I can feel the cold coming into my bedroom. Which is weird because it's always warm in the down under with the furnace right next door. I think I hear the wind right there in the room, except it's not the wind, someone breathing. Someone who rises up darker than night, as big as the room, and puts a giant hand on my face and presses down. Don't say a word, boy, he whispers. Not a sound. I try to move, try to shrink myself back into the bed, but the hand follows me down. The hand is so hard and strong, I can't move. And it feels like my heart has stopped beating. It's waiting to see what will happen next. I came back, he says, like I promised.